what do you see the next steps are for practitioners in really developing their ability to support leaders in the complexity? And I know that conversation immediately puts us on the kind of a, an edge where we're talking about practitioners that can support leaders as opposed to maybe uh, more rudimentary uh, baseline change management specialist. You know, I'm not, I'm not talking about those folks. I'm talking about the people that are more in a senior position or wanting to get there. As you move into more senior level roles, you, you and I have the, the good fortune of getting to spend a lot of time with CEOs and, and that, that at, people at that altitude of their organization. And it requires, I think, a, a different level of trusted advisor relationship. That's how I view it. I think, I think a trusted advisor can certainly be played out on the shop floor. But there's a different um, sophistication to it, I guess I would say, when you're dealing with somebody with, with hundreds of thousands of people working for them mm -hmm. and billions of dollars in the, at risk in certain. Uh, certain situations. And the difference has very little to do with the techniques or the tools. I don't know that there needs to be a whole lot of difference between what we would do with a shop foreman and the CEO, technically. But, but how we show up, I think, is completely different because that leader, it's rare for that leader to have a deep trusting relationship with anybody, inside or outside, uh, even more so with an outside consultant. And, um, and, so, and yet there's, there's certain space that you just can't develop together without that level of trust. And that trust is not going to come if you're not grounded yeah. well enough. They're not, they're not asking you to be grounded, they're just asking for help, mm -hmm. but it's not going to happen if you don't have a center of gravity that's pretty clear for yourself. And so for me, that gets translated into char character and presence. The, uh, I think of the character as, as the essence, if you take away all my facades and trappings, the essence of who I am, and it's such, such a personal phenomenon that Dean can't actually access my character. Dean accesses how I, how I reflect that character in the kind of presence I create. So I, there's a bubble around me and a bubble around you, and that's how people experience us. And it, it's a reflection of our character, but it's not our character. I, to me, that distinction is important because I, I don't think that we, I don't personally know how to relate to working on my character. I know how to reveal the character I have some of which, some of some of which is, you know, wonderful, and some of which is scary. That's who I am. My presence is what I can decide to do with that. Uh, so that distinction is important for me. Now, from then, if you think of that as if I actually was in touch with my character, not not the Daryl that I have been taught to be, so that I could please a client, but who I actually am. And I authentically express that through a presence. Now the question is, is there a client that would buy that package instead of the package Daryl's trying to pretend to be to get the business? So that the optimum linkage here is character presence and clients who would value that. So you actually get paid for being who you really are. Yeah. That to me is a direct link to what you've been saying in your work, what you and I are talking about here. Over the last few years, I've just gotten less and less intrigued with creating the next tool or technique, and, and, and in part because I've been doing that for so long, but in part because there's, there's so many people now doing really good, <laughs> there's all kind of new tools and techniques. So it, it's like as a profession, that's not a missing component anymore. Where I don't see enough work, in my opinion, is in helping practitioners show up. Yeah. Whatever tools or techniques they use, it matters less. You have to have one, but, but what do you bring as, what is your, the essence of who you are and how does that get manifested through those tools and, and techniques? That work, I, I think, is professionally, we don't have a lot of places to go do that kind of work. Um, 
And, and I, that's one of the things I think you and I have in common. Though, though we've come at it totally separate, that's that space we both, it's important to our work, but I think we both have an investment in the profession's development yeah. to move in that direction. My fear is I see our profession as not just an entrepreneurial opportunity. I think we have, we're uniquely positioned to actually make a difference. And personally, I don't have a gift for figuring out what to change, but I do have some facility for helping to implement. My worst fear is that as a profession, a really important change that matters is going to surface. And, and the leader of that change that would affect the quality of life for our grandchildren, okay, really an important change, turns to one of us as a practitioner and says, I know I need change help. Would you come partner with me? And all I show up with is tools and techniques. Yes. <laughs> that scares the hell out of me. Yeah. Because it's not going to work. Yeah, That's absolutely. what scares me. It's not going to work. So, so I see it as professionally to get ready for changes that really matter. We got to be we got to be relentless about our tools and technique development, and we've got to turn inside and figure out who am I, how am I showing up, and who do I partner with? Because because the essence of Daryl and the presence that I authentically project, that's not a good partner for a lot of people. Yes. So I've got to be attentive to who I am and, and because if that guy has got a wonderful change but I'm not the right, he needs to call Dean or, or somebody because he needs help, right? I don't feel professionally like we're, we're investing ourselves as much as I would like to see in that work. Yeah, wow. Well, you just spun up a really big world for us to jump into. I really appreciate that. And of course, you know the essence of the name of our company, Being First, right. but you're being first. So you're opening the door to what feels like home. Yeah. So thank you very much. I, I want to make a couple comments because I'd I love to keep investigating this with you. Is that when you talk about character and presence and you know that, that change that matters showing up and then, and then the practitioners show up just with a toolbox, um, what that means inherently is presence and character actually make a difference, they, has impact. They're an intervention in themselves. Exactly. Who you are is exactly. an intervention. Yeah. And so it's not just that, well, then you like me more, it feels good being around me, right. but there's something I bring in that authenticity, yeah. in that connection to my own being. And what I'll suggest is that as people turn in and do that inner work around their own character and presence, they evolve themselves, yeah, right? And they begin to let go of the, the d parts of their own ego that are dysfunctional, right? Fears that don't serve them, anxieties, doubts, nervousness, etc. And those things are all, of course, things that keep them thinking smaller than they could. And so there's this natural relationship between as I let go of those fears in my own self, because I'm doing the inner work, then I become broader in my worldview. I become more holistic. I see bigger holes, if you will, across space and time, and I'm more in touch with the depth of me. And in, in the impact then I bring with that newfound, more authentic character and presence is that I'm actually operating from a higher perspective, a deeper worldview, if you will, that does see more order in the chaos. So the impact that it brings to my client is I'm actually a better advisor because I'm able to see what they can't see. You're, I'm able you're to, able to see it, Dean, but you're also willing to say it. Exactly. <laughs> And that's, that's the point of the letting go of the ego's fears, because now I'm able to ask the questions that are the bigger questions, that by them pondering the question, they begin to solve their own complexity issues and challenges, because they know the content, right? We don't know the content. We're just there as facilitators of, of change and of development. And in that level of being connected to my own authentic self and not attached to looking good, getting the answer right, them liking me, but just showing up, right, in, in my wholeness and being comfortable in my own being, then I am able to speak the truth I, I see. I am able to ask the tough, the tough questions. I'm able to ponder the, 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 the conflicts and hold the polarities between the tensions of what they might be wrestling with and getting sucked into the anxiety about it. But we're able to be there in a neutral holding tank, if you will, for them to be able to be more effective in their own thought process. Uh, yes.